Nairobi, Kenya last week. To now, New York City. On stage, on tour, as the big events of summer 2019 roll out. Among them, grooving in the park. The biggest Jamaican type event in the US. Our mission, grooving in the park 2019. Keisha Cole, Barry Salmon, Third World, Sizzler Kalonje, and Michael Bolton. Wow. But that's not the only story we are chasing for you while in the Big Apple. Also in the mix, a story we dubbed Jamaica Nights in Queens. A look at some of the hottest Jamaica night spots in the area. Good vibes all the time. And the untold stories of their creators. And who are these Ras youths who broke the internet last week with these dance moves? They are based here in the US and we found them. Those stories and so much more from New York City. more and more screens around the world every week on stage so much more than entertainment last week they broke the internet and our social media pages with this video and now we found them in the Bronx New York. But who are they? Let's find out. Gary. Nice to meet you before. Group leader Gary right here. Yes, yes. So good Gary, introduce the rest of the crew for us. Yes. This is Ocean. Yes. This is Chris. Yes. And this is Lionel. Lionel and Gary. All three brothers. Ocean is cousin. So it's a Says blood right here. Yes. All right, so so who are you guys? We, we, you're Jamaicans, we know. Yeah. Tell us about your 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 where in Jamaica you're from and what you're doing here. Yeah. Well, we are from we are from Gibbs Hill, St. Mary. Mm -hmm. We are right on the border of St. Andrew and St. Mary, a little community. So and yeah. that's where we form our group, the Active Dancers. The Active Dancers. Yes. 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 And we've been going around searching for the bird, doing little shows in Jamaica until we get introduced to Pasa Pasa. And that's a platform for we to get exposed. Same. And from there, we migrate to the state, mm -hmm. where we do a bunch of show, wild palm, and just trying to get okay. what we do across. So how long have you been here? 12 years now. 12 years in the US? Yes. And you, the music is your, is your business. You, you spend a lot of time on, on this. Yes, so we are, we are choreographer you? and we yes. emphasize on what we do. You know, from Jamaica, we dance together as a group, choreograph, neat dance move, choreograph. Yes. Move. And we just try to build on that, try to build our name for ourselves. So you're actually yes. making a living of dancing, yes. are you? Yes. But would you say that this is your moment for the breakout? The big break didn't come until, until last this week. moment. All the hard work this moment. And thanks to everyone on the internet. So grateful and that the video is just up natural. We didn't make a video. We didn't post any video, so thanks to the person who posted this video for it to go viral. We appreciate you and we love you. And to all the fans who show love, we feel that love and we appreciate you. We love you guys so much. Yes, but, but what is the... How do you maintain the patience and the focus? It's love when fun. You know, when I love something, I will love dancing. Yes. So we, as family, we try to maintain. It's not because we have to work and, you know, family and stuff like that. So we, we, we trying to look that break, you know, we never, that, we never get that break we're looking for. But mm -hmm. we can sit and keep up with the clean dance move. We practice at times. Yes. Just to keep the move as neat as possible. Because when we dance as a group, we try to make it synchronized and make it neat. And that's what 
get us there because we believe in about ourselves. Yes. And we keep on doing this dance for Crow Grotters. And <laughs> this one, I don't, it does up natural with them because okay. we maintain what we do. All right. So tell us what happened since the video went viral. Well, I went for the phone ringing out. Yes. People calling us. We're still like, soaking in all that thing because we trying to get ourselves out there, but nothing like this. We wasn't, we wasn't trying to break the internet and nothing. So this yeah. is natural. it's natural to us and it's a surprise. And we're just so grateful. You know, after the, after the hard work, yeah. we finally have a dance out there. The people can put a stamp to say, yes, active dancer. We yeah. love that dance. Go tell go to make so a hit. The phone is burning up right now. <laughs> yes. Producers are calling you. <laughs> yes. Artists calling you. Clothes, too. clothes, Our designer, say, being book yes. designers. Yes. People are going to clothes. Yeah. Saying, wow. Virgin, it's, yes. it's such a good news story. I'm telling you. So, where you want to take it? Where are you going from here now? Where are you going to go forward? To just continue. Yes. Let people know that we love dancing, and dancing is our art form. This is what we do. Yes. So, we get a break and a stamp. To just continue doing it, reach out to the rest of the world. I let them know that active dancers are here to please them and continue to make clean dance moves. What about Jamaica? When are we likely to see you guys in action on the rock? Yeah, we know we have family back home, so we mm. always, this summer, was planning to go back. We kind of know we have family here, so we cannot go back and forth as we but we go this summer. We're planning to go this summer, we go to Jamaica. So it's like we are so grateful to go back on the rock and show the people that we are still here. Yes. You know. Well, you know, we can't commend you guys enough for this. Um, this is what we say to youths all the while. Boy, sometimes they come up to us and they're frustrated about their, 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 um, their efforts in music, trying to get the bus. And yeah. I've always said to them that your generation, this generation, is more fortunate than the previous generation. Yes. Because now you have the internet. Yes. You can post and it will find favor. Once you do the right thing, Brett Jing, once you do the kind of passion and energy you guys put into this, yes. something is going to give. Yeah. And, and I'm just using the moment to say that to all the youths out there that, you know, they should do what you're doing. Because we will call you. We on stage, we will, we will actually make the call. We're and so say, Brett Jing, <clears throat> we're like one other, and the people demand that you, you are on our stage. Yes. You know what I mean? I so. So we, we really like this and so we travel all the way over from, from Queens to come here and to put you guys on our camera and we're grateful to have you. Yes, we're so humbly grateful. For Mr. Victor yeah, Harvey. and you just give us some, some of the moves yeah. <laughs> right here in the streets. It's, yes. <laughs> and we're going to go to it, right? Let's go to that. The, the, the part of the thing provides right there, so in the middle of, the, of this park. And watch it. Anyway, yeah. yes. Watch it. <laughs> What we're gonna do now is to talk with, have a quick chat with the three, mm -hmm. the three stars now in that video because right. the man, they're the man, them we carry virus. So yeah. let's let's see them and hear from them how you how it has impacted your lives individually now. You star. Yeah, my name is Active Ocean. Yeah. And from this break, it's like I'm getting more acknowledged, and I feel so great to know I'm the youngest one in the group, and growing up from a baby. Look on them as my idol. So to be here with them now is the greatest pleasure. Your fan, give them book. fan base gone <laughs> worldwide. Worldwide. <laughs> worldwide. Yes, man. My name is Christopher Esty. And this is what happened. I'm really thankful for everything that the fans and each and everyone that comment acknowledge us. Thank you all. I'm not a really speaker like that, but I will show you guys what you have. Yeah, all man. Right? You Listen. just keep dancing, my brother. Dancing yeah, is my passion. Talking. So, <laughs> talking is not okay. for me, so we see. <laughs> yeah, my name is Lionel Este. You don't know, they call me Active Lionel. From this viral video going out, it's like my Instagram, my Facebook, is keep booming up. My phone is hot. Every day my phone is hot. 
charger can stay on the charger. <laughs> so it's like everyone is texting me, calling me, say, yo, Ton Star now. Yeah, man. Yeah. Lower, Shine, yeah. The sky's the limit. You're talking, bro. You see me? I'm you don't know. Like so right now, to the world, we say, you see me? Take it to the world. So anyone, 646 575 6966. And the booking, book Active Dancer 3 at gmail.com. the food at you now. Mm. At you now. Yes. All right. Yes. All right, gentlemen. Thank you so much, all of you. Bless yourself. Yes, sir. Bless up. Bless up. Bless up. All right. So there you have them active dancers right here on our stage in the Bronx, New York. Stay with us, still to come right here on stage. Sizzla Kalonje. Sizzla Kalonje and David Radigan are two of the headliners for grooving in the park. One-on-one -on -one chats with each. But first, Jamaica Nights in Queens. We'll be back. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week on stage. So much more than entertainment. There would hardly be a dispute over Jamaica's incredible track record as an inventor of international pop culture trends. But while the island's great music, reggae, and its exponents are duly credited as dispensers of these strands. Very little is said about migrant Jamaicans who have carried and planted the culture in just about everywhere they relocated on the planet. In many cases, their reggae music was their only possession on departure from the island in search of economic opportunities in foreign lands. Jamaicans like those who settle here in Queens, New York. This is Merrick Boulevard, widely believed to be the hub of Jamaican type entertainment here in Queens. And right now we're standing in front of Club Dubai, founded and operated by Lorna. The simple first name she goes by of Lorna. And tonight is her night to shine, to deliver the Jamaican vibe. And just about any night of the week, you can find a vibrant Jamaican vibe being delivered by a night spot on this avenue. You're from Spanish Town in Jamaica. How long have you been here? Since 1983. When did you get the music about that? When you came here or before? When I came here. When you came here? Yes. You weren't a party music girl before? No. <laughs> so you came very young, right? Yeah, you? I came here at a young age. When did you start the nightclub? April 6, 1996. 96? Mm -hmm. And this was it? No, I had a small um, restaurant and night entertainment. Lawrence Fishbowl, and I started out all by myself. One, and then? And then I decided to get a much bigger place because the crowd extended. So I moved here. What in your mind was the biggest reason why they liked you so much? I don't know. I can't explain that part. I think it's my personality. And um, Shine had used to come by the restaurant, and he said, Lorna, you smile alone, full my stomach. <laughs> Nightlife, what's in the package? Tuesday night is the biggest night here. It's the only night that we really promote for nightlife. Tuesday nights, we have a $20 cover charge, which covers seafood. We have chicken, jerk chicken, and um, curry chicken for people not, in, not into seafood. The seafood is like crab legs, pepper shrimp, Fry fish, we have festival, we have rice, we have salad, we have seafood pasta, and then they come in and they choose. So they're coming for the taste and the sound. Okay. And then we have some of the famous 
DJ, we have DJ Polish, we have Noah, we have Pretty Passy, and we have AJ Greenpeace. So they come also to hear these artists. Okay. So who are some of the people passing through, like celebrities from Jamaica? Oh, one of my favorites is Beanie Man. Beanie Man loves it? Yeah, but he's not here with us now, but he was one of the favorites. The Jamaican Prime Minister was here once, Bruce Golden. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> yes, he came, and I made a big dinner for him. Yeah, we have quite a few people. We have Shaggy. When he's in town, he's always coming by to see us. And who are your patrons, apart from them? Who are the general patrons who come every week? I have a mixed crowd. I have Americans, I have Jamaicans. I have a lot of different Caribbean people. Just came out for the nightlife entertainment at Dubai. Yes, and the, the music mix. What is the mix? Oh. They mix it with reggae, calypso, name it, name it. They mix it. The, the DJ, they play everything in here. Man, the energy up. We yard people, we Caribbean people, American people. Yes, sir, are the place to be. Every Tuesday. My, my, my sexy Auntie Lana. I share the owner and I just saw it there. Good vibes all the time. I think it's a great night. I'm celebrating because I passed my state certified instructor exam. And I'm just celebrating. I feel great. And I think it's a great party. Come to Seafood Tuesday. DJ Polo is making a move. Believe that. Just down the road from Club Dubai, Island Taste, another restaurant and lounge where the similar offerings. I'm Beverly, I'm manager of Island Taste Restaurant and Lounge. Mm -hmm. A proud Jamaican born in Jamaica? Proud Jamaican born and bred in Jamaica, yes. Okay. All right, so tell us about your service here. What are your services? We're a Jamaican restaurant, of course. So we have a large collection of Jamaican food, Jamaican items. At night, we are known uh, for having uh, different DJs here. Every night, we have a different theme of music because we try to reach out to all genre of people, so we play all genre of music. So people are dancing, people pull away the tables? Of course, and yes. Dance. At night, you take away the tables. We take out the tables and we become a party spot. Who are your customers? Who come? Everyone. We have a wide range of customers. There are times I look around and you can have a girl at 21 and you look around and you see a dude at 71. So we garner for everyone. We're a business and you cannot be marginalized as a business. We cannot say, well, okay, you're too old to come in. Yes, you might be too young to come in, but you're never too old to come to Island Taste. The Jamaican culture is at the center of your offering. Of course, aren't you? of course, of course, of course. In this restaurant, we serve Jamaican food. We have uh, mostly Jamaican music, of course, but we also play other music. But first and foremost, we are a Jamaican. We are of Jamaican culture, so we stick to our roots. Yeah, but do we Jamaicans appreciate you enough? Mm, I think it can be a little more. Uh, we as Jamaicans, we tend to be uh, a little critical of each other. So because of that, I don't think uh, they really put across how much they appreciate you, how much we appreciate each other as a, as a people. I think we, we need to work on that as a culture. In all honesty. Uh, anybody of repute that you would like to mention who have come here to party or to, to dine? Sean Paul, we have had Safari. Uh, yeah, we have had Cardi B here. Mm -hmm. We have had um, food celebrities. So we have had quite a few. In Rosedale, Queens, and meters away from Merrick Boulevard. So now we're at Panache, and it's one of the many businesses offering nighttime entertainment. In this case, uh, a restaurant and lounge. And we're actually standing now in, a, in what looks like a, a passageway, but if you look carefully, you will see it is well decorated with works of art, the fine art. And uh, we're looking at the husband and wife, who, who are the proprietors of this business. And they will tell us about it. Um, the impression here already is impressive. So this is actually a gallery we're in, right? I'm Absolutely. Our local artists, mm -hmm. 
We have a wide variety of artists that's in the gallery so that they can basically, um, you know, put their art out there. You yeah. know, so for, it's like a platform for new artists yeah. to be able to sell their artwork. Music, art, and food, right? That's yeah. right. You got it. So, all right. So talk about now your, your Jamaican-ness. When did you come here? August 23rd, 1986. And you? Uh, I came in 76. Okay. And you guys met where? Here or there? Here. They here. came here together? You met here? Met, met here. here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you build this together? You designed it? She designed it. I'm the visionary. I, I could have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you different? What are you offering, really? Here at Panache, we offer many different things. It's a two level. So we have the lounge downstairs, the restaurant upstairs, two bar, own music system. So if anybody like DJ Roy Oxtail, Chris Dubmaster come and play. The only thing they have to bring is a laptop. Yes. We have many weddings here. As I said earlier, they may have been here. The whole idea of panache, even the word panache, means style, class, and elegance. Yes. So when we created panache, we wanted to create like the flair of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. We wanted to bring the, the to Caribbean culture, Jamaican culture, to a different level. And so that's why we created Panache. Panache is really supposed to be like a great vibe. So that flair and style where you go when you go into Manhattan. So you don't have to go to Manhattan anymore because Panache is right here in Queens. The sophisticated Jamaican Absolutely. touch. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't have to deal with the traffic, the parking and all that. How would you describe your, your patrons? Boss. Well, we have a wide variety. As you know, like we are located very close to JFK. Yes. So a lot of time we get folks who are coming in, tourists, who are coming in that might Yelp us, you know, or, you know, look us up on Yelp, and they want to come and try this food because our food, our food is very unique. We, try, we have a, a fusion cuisine called Eurosoul. It's like a fusion of Mediterranean, Caribbean, and soul food because we wanted to uplift our food too. Mm -hmm. want to make it a little healthier, so we infuse the uh, Mediterranean. So we get a wide variety. We get Europeans. We get Asians, we get, of course, Jamaicans, but we do get a lot of like um, senators and you know politicians, Mayor. mayors that come by that really like it because of the ambience and because everybody can identify with the food here. And your live music? Well, our live music, we have like every Thursday night we have this function going on. Mm -hmm. We're currently going on outside right now. Every day, a different event. Now, and would you, is there a special night for you when, you're, when you have, a, what's your best night? Our best night is Thursday and, fr and Friday. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the people, our customers that have been coming here for years, we've been in business here six years, they appreciate it, they love it, and they're grateful that we brought something like this in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It appears that there's a synergy going on among Jamaicans for a change. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't know if we've seen this before, but it looks like a synergy going on in this area with all of you. Like, although your competitors offering the same services, mm -hmm. you're, you're also collaborating. Is that true? Yes, absolutely. But here's the thing. The good thing about all of us, all these nightlife places in Queens currently, I've been to all of them, support each and every one, and it's always enough for each and everybody to survive. Yes. And that's the most beautiful thing, to yes. support each other and love each other. Yeah, yeah. and we, you know, we're, we're, we're abandoning that whole thing about you have to do bad for me to do good. Yeah. And it's been a wonderful thing. Everybody from, from Sands, from Island Grill, they all come Island around. Taste, we all go Regal. to each, exactly, all of them. We have gone to each other's places and supported. The door, so you, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So all these places will go and support. Yep. Wow. A real collaboration Small and it's right. Yep. Cafe Regal, a restaurant, bar, and lounge on Linden Boulevard is just five minutes drive from Panache. Yes, yeah, we are the newest. Came here, we was told not to come here. But we came here with a vision. From where? I was a manager of moments. But I came here, my family decided it's a business, they know I love this business. So they came in, my brother and we came here and opened this business for me to manage it. Merritt Boulevard, everywhere has this. But Cambria Heights don't have it. Okay. You're talking about a, a restaurant, dining lounge, 
for family, friends, and we are about the culture, the Caribbean culture, American, Jamaican, Asian, Trinidadian, Guyanese, it don't matter. It's so what we do here. So far, we're, we're doing great. The community supported. I grew up in a poverty life in Jamaica. I grew up where I didn't have clothes, shoes, food. For that, I didn't get a proper schooling, but I came to this country and built myself. I'm self-made. And with a classic sidewalk dining area, Sands, located at 234 to 32 Merritt Boulevard, brings Manhattan to Queens. Owned and operated by someone popularly known in the community as the People's President. Sands opened up its door the 13th of February 2018. And with one aim and one aim only is to make sure we can provide excellent customer service quality food where the return is always by referral mostly before advertising so much that the value of what people pay for they don't travel to the bronx anymore it's right here in queens in the diaspora of the caribbean community somewhere where they can sit back have a glass of wine eat a meal reflect and reminisce on their meat soul meat or significant other and know that they are somewhere safe and comfortable and in fact enjoyable Thursday night is the live band. We have an artist here every Thursday. That's always interesting. And it's a give back to the community and our customers to show them how much we appreciate them by branding reggae music. It's culture. Identifying that reggae is alive and it's because of us creating that impact. Coming from Jamaica and where reggae music ought to be, so we are giving back. There seems to be a, a synergy, a coming together, a support system between all of you Jamaicans who are part of the nightlife offerings in, in, in Queens and in particular the Merritt Boulevard area. Is that true? I concur that for more than one reason. If you look at the strip at Merritt Boulevard, it should bring you back to a number of highlights in Jamaica. The corner right here on this plaza is a Donovan Johnson, a black Jamaican background who has been an impact and want to change Merritt Boulevard where it's going to be the highlight of the new Manhattan life. So when you go into the city, Merritt Boulevard will be the place to be for entertainment, business network, quality of life. It's going to change the lighting, so you're going to see a different synergy. In fact, in what you're stating, the way we're seeing reggae now, a guy like David Rodigan, who have taken reggae so much, was in an English guy. Yes. It speaks volume. Goes back to show you when uh, the Sir Coxon goes back in their basement, like we were talking earlier on, and the reggae music was in a basement setting. And it, 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 it eagers these guys. They were hungry. They were craving to find out what was happening. What is this music? Not knowing in 2019 we would have had this conversation. Yes. Now, looking back at the grooving in the park, which you have to credit Christopher Roberts and John and its team. And it's the reason why we are so privileged to have had this sit down because of them who have seen it and want to give back and assist in pushing reggae and its culture to the people so they can see the need of why reggae is so significant. My clientele comprise of Caribbean, Asian, European, we have a track Italian, we have a track Chinese. So, open up 16 months now, we have to credit the tireless work the entire team has put in to integrate not only one culture, but it's open to all cultures. There's white, there's blacks. It's a connection of American integrating because of the food. And every time someone comes here, should we not have something on the menu, we listen. And we brought in that because we realize it's a need that would attract them to bring their families. And we are even open to children. It's the beginning of a bigger project. Ultimately, 
to take it to a level where it's on an international scale. A number of um, properties, businesses that are offering Jamaican type entertainment, nights, food, yes. music, and vibe from the island. Um, state your name for me. My name is Money Mark Hart, you know what I mean? I'm trending right now in the US. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you're a recording artist? Yes, sir. And you, as an artist, from an artist's perspective, what you make of the Merrick Boulevards um, being, being considered by many the hub of entertainment in New York, Jamaican type entertainment yeah. in, in New York? As I can say, with the Merrick right now, the way it's looking, um, Queens is really holding you here. Sometimes you want to go to Manhattan, but you cannot. You don't want to leave. Yes. It's so much thing going on in America. Yes. Yeah. So it's a, it's a burgeoning situation going on. Yeah. It's like it's journey. You, you don't want to leave, it, it keep it because so much entertainment to the island vibe this year is just you know it's it's very rare people go to Manhattan anymore. Anymore. It start from island taste, and you have sands here. Next door you have Caribbean. Then you have stars, Dubai, keep going. It's just like all the way back to Jamaica Avenue. So as an artist, how do you feel about it? I feel good because I said I don't really have to step out my box to get my music out. I really, I could stay right here in my community and yeah. my thing is reaching out. Because people are coming here to consume. Yeah, people is actually coming here, especially on a Thursday night, it's live bands night. People like it. They like to feel like they're in a stage show and you, you know, the whole feelings are of that very important. Well, Wes? East Coast money move. If it's not a money move, but not move. It speak for itself. On stage. Bang it. Aye. Coming up, Sizzla Kalonje and David Radigan are two of the headliners for Grooving in the Park. One-on-one -on -one chats with each. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. All right, so here we are now sitting with one of the headliners at this Grooving 2019 in New York City. David, the legendary Radigan. Wow, what a pleasure it is to have him on our camera, right here on stage. Sir, so good to see you. Wow. Well, I should be on a stool with his black drop. <laughs> oh, wow. And you on a stool, <laughs> down in Jamaica, in your own private studios. Had I known you were, you were going to be here, David, this evening, I would have... You don't mock mocked it up. So, you course, don't mock up. Of course we'll get it done, man. I'm a big fan of the show. Yes. And I watch it because I'm an avid fan of the music. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you keep up with it. I try my best to keep up, but you're, I mean, no, I'm serious because the thing about the music is it's developing so fast. Mm -hmm. And this new generation rightly is coming through in the way that the Scatterlights was a new generation and, and the Melodians were a new generation and Bob was a new. So we have to have this movement. Without it, we're lost. And there's a new generation coming through. And the music they're making is music for themselves. Because the thing, uh, elders say to me, oh, I can't take the music. I don't understand the music. I don't understand some of it. And I don't get some of it. But what I say to people is, well, if you're not getting it, it's probably not for you. Right. You know, because they're yeah. making it for themselves. And that's the thing about the world in which we live. It's moving so fast. And people are making so much music. And I'm thinking, how does Wimpy keep up? Because you're up to speed with everything. I mean, well, if it's happening, you've got the money. Mind you, you have an advantage. You live in Jamaica and you're a Jamaican. We, yes, we got to escape it. Yes. Kingston, the, the heartbeat. Kingston, yeah. the heartbeat yeah. is, is always in our ears, you know, everywhere you go. But the last time you were in Kingston, mm -hmm. you were rocking kids. <laughs> David, you, kids were... So I don't think you need to do anything with and play, play your good old music, David. Well, I tell you, I feel thrilled and honored to be on a bill as a lineup with this. Yes. Such a lineup as Grooving in the Park. You're talking about Sizzler Kalunji, Beris Hammond, Third World, um, and Michael Bolton. And, and there's a DJ on a lineup. And I was like, <laughs> they've actually got me billed. Um, and what, what 
Um, and what I've been told by the promoters, the, the Groove in the Park team is, yep, that's how you're built because we want you to do what you do. Yes. Which is play your music and talk about it. And I'm, so look, I, I'm looking forward to that. That, David, that demo in the park, and it's wide, very wide. Have you done any research on it? I have. It's very wide. Oh, it's vast. It's and everybody, yes, family. Yes, kids, you know. mom, dad, grannies, uncles. It's, it's a real cross-section of society, and they're all there for one thing, the music and the vibe. And I have no doubt in my mind that you'll rock that place. I'm, I can't wait to see it. The Dub Garden. Here's this guy talking about can't keep him. Have you, have you looked at him live when he's live, <laughs> playing records? No guy, no youngster is better with uh, exerting more energy than you did. The energy... You're, you're I, jumping, you're moving, you're, you are making people dance by just looking at you. <laughs> but I've always, I can't help myself. You know when you love something so much? Yes. You really love it? It's like to be given the privilege to share it. Yes. I remember as a youth hanging out my bedroom window to see if anyone was listening to my Derek Morgan records. And that was in 66 and 67. I always wanted to turn people on mm -hmm. to something that I thought was so special. And of course, in those days, it was completely new. This whole Jamaican mm -hmm. music movement, this is why I say time and time and time and time again, Jamaica's, Jamaicans watching this show now in Jamaica on Jamaican television need to know this, that the music of this island, and I am not patronizing you, yes. and I'm not patronizing you, but the music of Jamaica is revered around the world. I think Jamaicans who perhaps haven't been to Japan or America are not perhaps up to speed with the fact that this music has had a major impact on world music, from dub, from mixes, from remixes, before house, before hip hop, before techno. This music was there in the format that came with Jamaica independence, the incredible energy of these iconic figures, you know, like the Wailers. Bunny Wailers, Black Heart Man, one of the greatest albums of all time. Bob Andy's, the Songbook album at Studio One, all these magnificent recordings, Prince Buster. I mean, the list is long. I mean, you're talking about putting any of these names on a headline bill in London or New York two, three decades ago, you're talking about complete and utter sell-out roadblock. This is the power and the impact that the music of your country has had on the world. That is a fact, and I've said it. Do you think we know it enough? I don't we think... We Jamaicans. Uh, well, I think... I think you probably do to an extent, but I think you, I'm proud to tell you, I'm proud to say it, because I've seen it, I've been in Italy, I've been in Switzerland, I've played to these audiences, and I've seen these great artists perform in those countries when I've been on festivals, and I've seen the impact. Go, I mean, just go to Benny Kassim, go to Rotterdam Festival, the yes. Rotterdam Sunsplash Festival in Spain. Go, go to- Summer Jam. Go to Summer Jam in Germany, mm -hmm. there you're going to see it. Yeah. There you're going to see the impact of your music, of Jamaican music. What is it, David? What is it that is? What is it about reggae? What is, what is it about the music that got you? That got the world? The impact of the music that got the world, ska and especially reggae, was the message, the passion, and the melodies. Those three things mixed together. Those unique voices. I'm a sucker for a melody. I love a melody. Mm -hmm. You take a group like the Melodians, and listen to what they did. You take the raw, brusque style of Toots and the Maytals. Listen to the Wailers and those early recordings. The beauty and majesty was in the songs and the melodies. These haunting arangements, these great horn arrangements. You know, Bob Andy's I've Got To Go Back Home is just one example. I played that at the Dub Garden um, last year in Jamaica. And everyone, -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. I've got to go back home. <laughs> and at the bridge, everyone sings the horns. Mm -hmm. This is a reflection of why the music is so important. And also the music stood up for injustice. It stood up for people who were in sufferation because it spoke man to man, woman to woman about what people were having to endure. Mm -hmm. And this music is a great release. You know, it, it, it lifts people's souls. It gives people solace and comfort. It, it gives people hope, and that's what it did. That's what the music has done. And that's why when people hear it in other countries, even if they don't understand it, they get it. There's something within the music which strikes a chord in the heart and soul of people. And once you get that reggae fever, there is no known antidote. It is infectious, it is a passion. So we, the youngsters in Jamaica now, 
I call Jamaica the hat trick of, of reggae. Um, with them doing dance on, on to it, and, um, and they're more passionate in some respects uh, about it than they are about reggae. Even yes. though we, there, are, a, there is a new generation we call the New Roots, the yes. Chronics and those guys. Yes. Are we then um, distracted from what, why the world wants us? Why do, uh, is the world still interested in that, in the melody and the, and the, 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 um, the harmony and the, the messages of love and, and upliftment and, um, and equal rights and justice and those things? The world is distracted by what's happening. There's no two ways about it. Yes. People have told me this time and time again, what has happened to the origins of the music? What has happened to this new format of music? Mm -hmm. And it has impacted, and I say it openly, without fear or favor, because it's the truth. And what I say in, in, by way of reflecting it and trying to understand it, because I think the important thing in life is always to try, if you don't understand something, you don't know about something, you have to try and get your head around it. Why is it happening? Can we, as someone once said, walk a mile in that man's yes. shoes to understand why this is happening? We may not understand why these young musicians are making the music they make within the dance hall genre. One of the observations I would make about some of the beats they're creating is they don't have the impact of 80s and 90s dance hall. Now, what we've seen is this incredible eruption of Afrobeats. The Afrobeat thing has been a phenomena, truly incredible. It is blazed a trail across Africa into Europe and now into America. You know, I was hearing Afrobeats on the radio downtown in Manhattan today. So what does that tell you? That's telling you that there was once a time when Afro music wasn't as popular as it is now. But one of the observations and one of the criticisms leveled at, at Jamaican, at the new wave of Jamaican dancehall music is the beats and the production are not as heavy and as fat and as juicy. They don't drop in the way that a Steely and Cleavy beat did or a Dave Kelly. This is one of the observations. But the, the fact of the matter is that these young producers are making the music that they want to make for their peer group. And unless you get your head around that, it's difficult. I also think that anything that glorifies violence in a, in a, in a negative way has no serious purpose. It, it's like, okay, then people say, well, why do you go and, go and watch a gangster movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I take that point. But if there's a genuine glorification of it, in other words, that this is something we should be doing or something, a, a kind of gang, then I, I question that because as an avid fan of the music, that's not what attracted me to the music. Mm -hmm. What attracted me to the music was upliftment. This music uplifted people. If you're going to put people down in a hole and make them seek out a life which is negative and vacuous, then you're inviting something into your community which is negative, which serves no use or purpose. And we have to question why. What's the, what's the use of that? I often say to them, the world would look to Jamaica if they want to buy violence or want to know how to kill people. Jamaica wouldn't be the place to look for ways to do that. No. Because there are people in the world, there are countries in the world that can do that way Oh, I, I could not agree more. I okay. could not agree more. It's happening now in the Yemen. Yes. You know, people, I mean, wars, wars, weapons of war. Not rumors of war, but w war. Yes, I agree. And so Jamaica was the opposite of that. Jamaica, the music, as you've said, was about love harmony, love coming out of poverty. Uh, yes. I that mean, got yes. the world, isn't yes. it? Yes, of course, Winford. Of course. So they don't want it for anything else. That's and, what and they the, want. That's and, what the world wants and, them to And if you look at the big records right now, coffee, right? You oh, coffee. stop there. There is one glittering, gleaming, shining example mm -hmm. of how a young 18, 19 year old student, young girl, becoming a woman who has taken the music and turned it upside down. Mm -hmm. Her tone, her ability, she can sing too, mm -hmm. but her rapping style, the melody and the message, blessings fall on my right hand, mm -hmm. gratitude is a must. Yeah. And Winford, this is being played on Hot 97 in New York, where we are, mm -hmm. daytime high rotation. It's being played on BBC Radio One on daytime rotation. Mm -hmm. And she's just done a combination with Ed Sheeran, mm -hmm. 
Justin Bieber and Chronix on yeah. a remix of Ed's new single. What does that tell you? She's burning up the world. Of course she We're is. We're coming from Kenya last week. Kenya. You're in Kenya? Nairobi. And oh, when, okay. they put, when they drop those, that record, ask him, that guy behind the camera. Rupert. The place. The place bus up. Explode. <laughs> David. Coffee. In Kenya. Kenya. Yeah. Salute. So, you know, so that's, the, that's the, the message that these kids, those who are doing violence, who believe that... You who know, are glorifying violence. Who are glorifying violence and believe that... And why are they... Do you think they're looking at the world enough, uh, David? It, are they interested in the world? Or is it just their little environment back home? It would seem, to be, it would seem to be their environment back home. Um, this teenage thing, and we've got this horrendous horror that's happening in our communities, England, where young people are stabbing each other yes. every day. I mean, this is a, an epidemic in England. Young people, on a weekly, sometimes daily basis, are trying to stab each other to death. 12-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 18-year-olds, dropping in the street for nothing. That is a glorification of violence. When you have people living in fear, you're living in a horrible world. If you can't go to bed at night and lay down on your pillow and give thanks for a day and know that tomorrow you have a day of hope and, and, and then you are going to live in fear, then that's a terrible thing. And I don't understand it, but it is prevalent. It has become more prevalent in teenage society in our major cities, especially in London. And I see it and I hear it in some of the music that's being made. What does it achieve, in my opinion? Well, it clearly achieves nothing other than it causes death. But if we, re if we reflect it to Jamaica and look at Jamaica, it's that, that gang culture, that group culture, that I don't have anyone but I've got my gang so I've got safety and I've got power and I'm empowered by the people I move with. And one of the issues, of course, is all to do with the development of a young person. You know, what they go through, the changes they go through, mm -hmm. um, from boyhood to manhood and all that comes with it. And we're living in a world now where more and more, it seems to me, people are being obsessed with social media. I mean, okay, social media is incredibly important in that it, we can communicate with each other. But now it's reached a stage where you're in a dance and people are filming themselves in the dance, dancing. And you think, uh, where's this gone to? They look for everything. Yeah. And of course, the whole thing of filming something instead of watching something. You know, I saw Bob Marley, Peter Tosh and Bunny Whaler in a pub in London, in Fulham, in 19, uh, 1974. I'll never forget the performance. I didn't need a camera to remind me. It's still in my head. I think sometimes we have to remember that we do have brains, we do have memories, and we do have recall. And so we can. I know people want to capture everything, but sometimes the, the photograph simply doesn't capture. Uh, it, it is merely a moment in time, but the experience itself is vital. And that's why, that's why I think sometimes we're, we're too dependent on, on, on what somebody else is doing, how many likes somebody has, am I as popular as, am I too fat? Um, this body obsessive thing, and how I, I saw your program about body enhancement, that was very interesting um, on stage time that you did that show. Uh, because that's another concern, yes. you know, young, especially with young girls, they're concerned that they, they've lost, con they, they lose confidence in themselves. It's a terrible thing. But, uh, young people growing up need help and encouragement. They need a positive attitude. And if you're saying that the best thing they can do is be down with the with the whole culture of hating and the whole gang culture, it's just it's insane. Um, I don't understand it because I, I don't live in it. Um, and I, I didn't, when I grew up, uh, I certainly wasn't in a gang, I chose not to be. I think the greatest conviction, I think the greatest thing young people can do is to stick to their own truth. And, and I think it's very important, and this may sound a bit cheesy and it may sound a bit corny, but my God, listen to your mother and listen to your father and honor your mother and father because I know that as the years have ticked by, the things my parents taught me have resonated with me as I've become a man. I think it's very, very important to listen and learn. More of our chat with the legendary David Rodigan next week. But after the break, Sisla Kalanche. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment.
way now to find uh, Sizzler Colonge. In the meantime, Grooving's co-producer, Ras Clem, on the readiness of Grooving in the Park 2019. 48 hours away from the ninth edition of Grooving in the Park, and it is going to be magical. The magic of music rolls into Grooving in the Park this coming Sunday. Tell me, give me the big prediction. You know, every year, Moano, is it going to be bigger or not? Well, from where I sit, from where I stand, this grooving may surpass last year's grooving. Stay tuned. And last year was big. Last year was huge. So talk about this for us, this particular return to New York. How, how it feels to you and the grooving and being part of this grooving in the park. Well, it's good being here in New York once again, old school. You know, and I would say to myself, welcome home, Sizzler. Big up yourself, all Jamaican people, African people, Rastafari people. Yes. Well, you know, when you say groove, Jamaicans, you got the grooves. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's dancehall, whether it's reggae, skia, you know what I'm saying? Merengue, Jamaica, you keep it grooving. This is grooving in the park. And uh, honestly, it's somewhat of a continuation of the duty of our ancestors, of great icons, of great legends who have long um, paved the way for us. And I'm honored being a part of such, um, I would say, um, production of music concerning my department as an entertainer singing for the people. So I'm pretty much here to furnish the show Grooving in the Park with my indigenous talent as an artist from Jamaica and with Sizzler on a show like this it got to be grooving. The lineup of people that you're you're sharing stage with from Michael oh. Bolton to the great Barris Hammond. Yes, Mr. Barris Ford Hammond, legend and father, you know what I mean? Legend and father for us all. And I'm just happy right about now knowing that I'm representing young youths of the world, especially in Jamaica, who have long anticipating a path like this, being on a stage with mega artists such as Mr. Bolton, Keisha Cole, Barry Salmon, you know what I'm saying? Couldn't have been better. The whole lineup is just superb. I think it's going to be an epic show. There are fans in this area, they are coming out to see you. Um, when last was it that they saw you last? No, that's not really a difficult question, but I don't remember when, because I'm always working. Yeah. But once they say New York, I'll have to be in New York. Yeah, yeah because when we left Jamaica, New York, I had them people yeah, take care of Dada and do every little thing for Dada. I don't need to go nowhere else unless being called. So New York has big up. All right, give us a summary on the career, though, otherwise, recordings and so on. Tours, well, pretty much, whatever. I'm just um, getting out of the studio. I'm always in the studio. It's like my second room apart from uh, you know what i'm saying well i've been working on an album it's pretty much i'm um, completed and i'm still working on another album that's pretty much completed also just about to be harmonized mixed and mastered and present to you beautiful people and uh, as you should know um, it's a continuation of the augustown emancipation birthday celebration it's 180 first year of um, birthday celebration for Augustown and it's also the fourth staging for the Caesar Youth Foundation, a charity charity foundation that I've um, managed to structure where in which we can assist the people best in our community and the world at large and yes we're pretty much still working on somewhere that um, could be a venue, um, we dub it as a Sizzler Museum, so I'm in a bit of construction, having somewhere wonderful, hospitable, where we can host you beautiful people, you can be more comfortable and accommodative in the community of Augustown, in the whole realm of Sizzler Kalonji, yes, and I've released an album of recent called The Victory, it's doing pretty well, um, you know, produced by Richard Bramwell, as you already knew, Richard Bramwell was just a little youth coming in the studio at Mr. Gussie Clark studio, Windsor Avenue and he's now here still working with us and as I said Richard Bramwell I will have to say big up yourself Paul Daly and I will have to say big up yourself Robert Murphy you know my first engineers and 
just just about it. And we're in the community. We're trying to get the community of Augustown in just one fold. We need one umbrella of truths and rights with the name of His Majesty. We have um, the community-based organization. We got um, the JCF. They're a part of the whole um, happening, the whole scenario in the community. And the people and the whole citizens, parents, um, respectable and responsible mothers and fathers, they're pretty much a part of this because we need to do this to represent our culture. We're indigenous to the land and um, we're seeking a way of righteousness for our youths as for them to step from the pathway of negative to eradicate the crime and eradicate the violence because it's not doing you no good. Um, you, we got um, students, there's an influx of students being residents in our community just about now because they attend the University of the West Indies doing their masters whatsoever it might be to the best of their ability. They are just there and we want to make the community a beautiful community and we've got um, other shows lined up as um, I've said before, grooving in the park is part of the um, indigenous um, cultural um, item within the whole package of Cis Labine and artists working for the Jamaican community in Africa. And I heard about a project involving your son. Yes, Rockstar, <laughs> Melaku, well, both of them, Raheem Collings, he's pretty much my engineer when um, Richard Bramwell or Robert Murphy is not there. And he's pretty much an artist doing his thing, correction music. And you got cult music with um, Mele Collins, pretty much an artist, he's doing his stuff. So I'm just proud of um, the youths and how um, they've taken, I would say, the art of their father to a level where the people can say yes son you're doing well and i'm glad that the world accepted um both of them and they're to your disposal within truths and rights so you just guide you it seems as though you've been guiding since the Kalungian. we guide ourselves so yeah they're doing well and um in the pipeline we have a lot of work coming the continent africa there are little sizzlers all over the continent <laughs> <laughs> are you aware of that How, when last have you been there and Talk a little bit about that, your, your popularity on the continent. Um, Africa, my last time in Africa was when? In, in Gambia? Yeah. <laughs> Gambians. <laughs> yeah, beautiful people, you know, Africa is our home. And yes, lots of sizzlers out there, you know what I'm saying? So it's just music and it's good when you can inspire someone to show their true potential and what they can do. And it's good when you have people looking up to you for guidance and I would say just about any um, correction and leadership. As His Majesty say, a true leader is someone with a high level of love and respect and self-discipline. And that is what we would like the youths of today to grasp. Crime and violence ain't doing no, no good. You should make your parents proud. You stay in school, send yourself back to school. Do something that can help the world community at large. <laughs> All right, so that's where we leave you for this week. Do join us again next week for the full story of Grooving in the Park and part two of our chat with the legendary David Radigan. Winford Williams on behalf of the hardworking team here in New York, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more on stage.